The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We have gathered here in this place on land that was previously that inhabited by the Mohawk and Mohican people. We are grateful to be here and seek to be good stewards of this gift of creation. We're grateful for those who have gathered with us in person today and um, grateful for those who are uh, joining us online as well, all of those who are watching uh, through our YouTube channel. If you are here in the sanctuary, you should be sitting in a place that is marked with a yellow sit here sticker. If you look around and see that you're not in that place, during the first hymn, we encourage you to go and find a yellow stickered place to sit. Not the red, but the yellow. Caution, stop. Got it? That way we can sing together if we are filling up all the yellow marked places to sit. The ushers can help you with that if you're confused. Just go talk with one of them. We are uh, delighted that today is a uh, big, big day here within First Reformed Church. We are um, uh, having our annual meeting right after the service today. Uh, there are reports, annual meeting reports. There's one left up here, a hard copy, and more are on their way. So do not worry if you don't have a hard copy of our annual report yet. You soon shall have access to that. We're going to be electing elders and deacons today. We're going to be remembering those who have died in this past year today. Uh, we are going to be honoring outgoing consistory members. Uh, it should be a great blessing to be here. And then we're going to have a BYO picnic on the front lawn here in the church. So um, if you brought your picnic lunch with you, you can join others out on the front lawn where we can remove our masks and visit with one another. Uh, here in the sanctuary, we keep our masks on in the building uh, as per our COVID policy, safety policy. But out there in the annual meeting, uh, after the annual meeting at the picnic, you'll be free to, to fellowship with each other, uh, seeing each other, uh, without masks and uh, opportunity to connect in that way. This week, the usual good offerings are uh, being shared, um, including Wednesday lunch and Kerygma studies and stockade strummers. Encourage you to take a look at the bulletin uh, for the opportunities to engage in worship and fellowship and mission here together. Uh, tonight, there is a Jazz Vespers. Lynn, you're hosting tonight. I am. And Dave We're going to talk about sun. Or he's going he's gonna to play songs about sun and fun. So sun and fun. Yep. Yep. And right now, we're feeling the sun heating up this building. So, you know, stay as cool as you need to be and feel free to move about if uh, outside. If you need to get outside, if it's too hot in here, feel free to stand in a doorway. A breeze will... Re will receive you there. So those are the things that are happening in our life together. Yeah, yeah. pretty exciting. And we're filling up, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, we, I see one more yellow sign way back in the back, and I see one up here in the front right now. And some people are not sitting at their signs. So, there, and there may be one here in the front. And there, I don't know, is there room up in the balcony? There are three seats up there in the balcony. There may be another seat up in the balcony also, mm -hmm. which will be warmer. Anyway, it's exciting. We're glad you're all here. Um, the hymns that we are singing, uh, you will find if you are here in the sanctuary, again, are in your hymnal. We're singing one hymn, two verses at the beginning of the service, two verses at the end of the service. So that's why there's just one hymn listed. And... I want you to know also that if you by any chance didn't bring lunch, but you want to check in, Fellowship anticipated that maybe somebody might forget or not be aware, and they have a little bit of something for people to eat who didn't bring lunch. So don't feel like you can't go if you didn't bring lunch. Oh. And there are, will also be drinks for people to share, simple drinks like water and lemonade and things Excellent. like that. So we'd love to have you there. And Daniel kind of pointed out this way, but I think they're going to be over that way because there are two nice big trees over there. <laughs> oh, excellent, in the shade. And it's Perfect. nearer to the kitchen. Perfect. I 
want to invite you just to take a deep breath. That will help us cool down. We breathe in the presence of God. As we breathe out, we are aware of the presence of God in this room as we gather to worship. And we will be thinking today about family, the family of God, the family of church, the families that we know during worship. If you are here, I invite you to rise. We're gonna sing the first two verses of hymn number 461, God is here. And those of you at home, sing heartily wherever you are. We share in the spirit. We share in that call to renewal, that call to truth. So let us stay rising or rise again if we're able and share together our prayer of confession, our need for God's grace as found in the bulletin. With one voice, let us pray. In prayer, God, we call upon you as Father, we walk with Jesus as siblings. We think of our church as family. But being family is hard work. Sometimes we don't understand each other very well. Sometimes we speak to each other in ways we wouldn't talk to strangers. Sometimes we spend more time with friends or colleagues than at home. Sometimes we can't see the true families around us. Forgive us, O oh God. Help us to strengthen all the families we are a part of and to share your love extravagantly. Amen. Friends, receive this good news that Jesus, our brother, forgives us our sin. And we are called to walk in the newness of the life of the Spirit with the one we call Father, Abba, for the life of this world. Let us share our response in our hearts, response of praise from Psalm 30. I don't know who's singing this, but look forward to that voice. <laughs>
and let us affirm our faith with the words found in the bulletin. With one voice, we say these words together. We believe in a loving God who is life's breath for all of Earth's creatures, who is the ground in which our lives flourish, who is the mystery toward which we are drawn. We believe in the risen Christ, whose life is the way we see God made real, whose death bears witness to the power of love, whose presence nourishes our spirits each day. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who flows as a refreshing spring of life, who comes as divine fire to energize the faithful, who creates communities of joy and justice. Hearing this good news and receiving it, we share with one another a sign or word of Christ's peace, saying or signing, the peace of Christ be with you. Share a sign of that peace with one another. Last week, we had a lot of excitement here. I had a lot of excitement because we had children here for the children's message. And today, we have two people here who are going to work with children. And I want to invite them to come forward, Nicole Van Ort and Alex Mancuso. I was hoping we'd have kids, but if you're a child at home, you're going to get to participate in this. We're looking forward to it. Good morning. Good morning. Can you get a little closer to the mic so they can hear you online too? Hi, Alex. Nice, Hello. nice to meet you. I get to meet people from online in the building. It's really fun. So where are you going to be next Sunday? Where are you going? We'll be up at Camp Fowler. Oh, and, and what are you going to do up there, Alex? Um, so we're both going to be on staff for the summer. I'm going to be on art staff. Oh, an art staff. And what are you going to do? I'm going to be the summer assistant director. Oh, the assistant director. <laughs> Ooh. And who will you be working with up there? We'll be working with children. And how old are the children who are there? So kids can come from third grade all the way through 12th grade. Oh. And what do they do when they're up there? Um, we do all kinds of things. We go canoeing and hiking and kayaking. We do different arts and crafts activities, we play volleyball, we share meals together, we sing lots of songs. And swimming? Oh, swimming. lots of swimming oh, yes. and, and s'mores. eating good food? Oh, yes. yes. Very good And food. do you worship up there? We do. We do. We do, because Camp Fowler is a church camp, right? It is. And it's a really, really fun church camp from what I understand. Now, I have another very important question. Did you go to camp as a camper? I did. Well, how I old were too. you when you went the first time? Eight. Eight. How old were you? I was 14. 14. So you can be lots of different ages and still go to camp. And then you might. Why, why do you keep going back there when you're grown up? It's just a lot of fun. And it's a really place, neat place to connect with God's creation and the people who share that with you. So you connect with creation and with people and with God if you go there. I have heard from people who went to Camp Fowler, who grew up at Camp Fowler, who, who may not be quite as old as I am, but they, but they might also, almost be, that Camp Fowler really gets in your heart. Is that right? It really mm -hmm. gets in your heart, and it becomes like a family to you, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. It's a very important thing. Well, I want for us to bless you as you go, and I want everybody to help. And so if you're a kid at home, I want you to do this. Um, because you can help. The way we can do blessing is I want you to stick your hand out like you're going to bless Alex and Nicole as they go. And we're going to pray together. I'll do the prayer. If you want to repeat after me, you can. Thank you, God, for Alex and Nicole. Thank you, God, for Alex and, Nicole. and for all the people who work at Camp Fowler. Bless them in their work. And thank you for sending them on our behalf. And bless all the children who will go to Camp Fowler. 
May they have fun and feel safe and welcome. And bless their families who send them. And all the adults who support this camp. Thank you, God, for being with Alex and Nicole. We'll miss them while they're gone. <laughs> so take care of them, God. Amen. Have a good summer. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Missionary passages are sometimes perplexing and challenging and difficult to wrap our heads around and our lives into. But maybe we can be reassured that in the broad and wide Christian family of churches all across the world today, there will be other people listening to these same texts. And we are a part of a diverse and expanding family of Christians. So even though we may have various expressions of our faith and our life experiences are different from one another locally and globally, maybe along with many of our siblings today in these passages, we will receive some nugget to chew on this week from these two thought-provoking lessons that will keep us and them in relationship with God and one another for another hour or another day or even for a lifetime. 
In the second letter to the Corinthian church, the Apostle Paul claims a grounding in this broad community. Our relationship with God lies deep within us, he confesses, despite what swirls around us in the world. And the eternal nature of that faith binds us together in community and with God, and will even beyond our lifetime on this mortal coil. Our place in God's family is sure. And the home that we inhabit in God's love is expansive. There is always room for more. And the gifts of grace and love are there for everyone. Some scholars believe that this letter is Paul coming to grips with the reality that he may not live to see the second coming of Christ that he has anticipated. And yet he refuses to be discouraged. It is the heart of the spirit of his faith in a God who raised Christ from the dead to claim hope, to defy the realities that are close at hand, and to claim the truth of the abiding and transformative glory of God that transcends generations and time and space. If Paul is beginning to relax into a sense of the eternal, ethereal, constant love and power of God, then Jesus in Mark's gospel is in a completely different place. He is on a tear. Remember that Mark's gospel is the gospel of immediacy and urgency. And now post Easter tide, you and I and all across the world are entering back into Mark's gospel in the whirlwind beginning of Jesus' ministry. Baptism, check. Gather companions, check. Cast out unclean spirit, heal disease, start a preaching tour, cleanse a leper, heal a paralytic, share a meal with a tax collector, address deep theological issues, heal again, teach a multitude, climb a mountain, and appoint 12 disciples. Check. After all this spirited activity, and we're only in the third chapter, Jesus goes home to rest and have dinner with his family. And people follow him, lots of them. And in this gathered crowd, some start talking trash and others, important people from Jerusalem, scribes begin to make threats about a possible allegiance between Jesus and demons. And the brief family reunion is quickly in shambles. Jesus begins to take on the naysayers. And his mother and his brothers, anxious for his safety, come outside to fetch him back in, refusing to be ensnared in triangles of their anxiety. Jesus pushes his family away hard. He focuses intently on his mission on building the broader family of God by sharing the good news of forgiveness, healing, welcome, hope. He reframes family on the spot to include every person gathered there, every person willing to do the will of God. Biblical family values can be challenging. And this is one more example. As Jesus is quick to define family by faith and action, how do we, who tend to think of family in terms of love and relationship, flesh and blood, shared values and profound acceptance, how do we respond? Let us listen. Before we listen, let us pray. Guide us, O Lord, by your word and Holy Spirit, that we may listen well and hear your word. Amen.
But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens." Then Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand and his end has come. But no one can enter the strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins, but whatever blasphemies they utter, and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin, for they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him, and they called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. May God's blessing be upon our readings. Will you pray with me? Gather us to you, O God, and speak to us today individually and as community a word we need to hear. We are waiting in Christ's name. Amen. In my travels around the Capital District, I often find myself pulled in my car up behind a vehicle that has a set of those window appliques of family. You know the ones? They line people up left to right, tallest to smallest, maybe two moms or two dads or one of each. 
teenagers, little children, baby, dogs, cats, the whole kit and caboodle. I remember that that's how I used to think of my family when I was a kid. There was dad and mom and me and Suzanne and Kurt and no pets. But family, of course, is broader than the people who might live in your house or normally travel in your car. What about your grandparents or your cousins who come to visit? What about that neighbor in need or a foreign exchange student or a foster kid or two or three who come to live with you? Families expand and change. Babies are born, people get married and bring a host of new relationships to the party. And sometimes members drop out of the picture and get lost. Even with lots of love and hard work and prayer, families get broken by outside influences, by physical and mental illness, by misbehavior sometimes, by death. So whereas that sticker family is static and captures a specific point in time, real families transform. They are organic. They sprout and flourish. They flex and bend and blend and they wither and are reborn. At a time when I was struggling with my own family, a religious leader reminded me about Jesus' teachings about family relationships, and he pointed out to me that families can be formed beyond origins of birth and dint of circumstance. They are formed in neighborhoods, in interest groups, and office communities, at school, in communes. And as Nicole and Alex have agreed, over summers at Camp Fowler, family is formed. And as we mentioned in our opening prayer, gathered Christians name congregations like this one gathered this morning, gathered in sanctuaries and online, as church family. Family is a choice, Jesus declares gathered by shared values, strengthened by common experiences of joy and grief, celebration and defiance, molded not only by things that are seen, but also by those that are not, stories and dreams and songs, fictions and truths. Well, last week in church, we heard Jesus speak with Nicodemus about being born from above, about being born in the spirit into relationship with God. And today we listen as Jesus talks about the will of God in relationship in family. The will of God. Maybe that's clear to you. Maybe, maybe it's puzzling. What would you say the will of God is? What are the parameters? What are the priorities? How do we recognize when a family, however we perceive it, is doing God's will? People of good faith will and do answer questions like these differently. Some church families are insular and self-protective for the sake of clarity about what God's will is to them. While others are open-armed and daringly inclusive, believing God's will is to be a welcoming, expanding community. Some families locate themselves geographically in a specific place they call home, and that is where they find God. And others define themselves by being more mobile as a community. They are able to pull up stakes and move around at will. And still others we are discovering now are finding each other over fiber optic cables and the wonders of the internet. 
Just as it has been throughout the history of human families, it is in churches. Some are joined in particular moments in time and then succumb to circumstance, or they wane over time and fade away, while others, against all odds, thrive and grow and evolve over generations. So what is the will of God for this church family? This is one of the questions Consistory has been grappling with for several months. Why are we here? What is our purpose today? What does God want from us? For years in the life of this church, maybe the answers to those questions have been crystal clear. Maybe they have been assumed and not talked about. And maybe they have been envisioned and preached and directed by the pastors. In this time of transition, as you seek a new leader, it is important to know how you perceive the answers to what God's will is for this church. Now, surely the restrictions and changes made necessary by the pandemic in this past year have taught us some important things, and maybe they are clarifying things. Have we learned what is essential to our common life of faith, fundamental to our inner nature together and to our outer expression as church? Are there things that we took for granted and just always did that are now kind of wasting away? They have become less important, even unnecessary. Maybe they are now the stuff of the past. Not bad things, just not necessary now. Are there places that we are divided that threaten the foundation? Or are we bound in faith, in a spirit that moves our souls to flex and bend and to reach out to humanity around us and to risk the ways our concept of church and family might change? Today, we are gathered to do what families do to share sacred moments, to be touched and recognized as precious and worthy, to eat and to play together, to do important business and to help one another discern our call to service together, to pray and to venture into an unseen future together. At Jesus' table, we gather to be fed and strengthened by the word made flesh that we might continue to be made by God into the body of Christ. And on this day of annual meeting, we gather to commit to one another that we will do the work of becoming family, formed to do God's will, to be siblings, not just to those already in our heart, but to those whom God will send us. We dare to believe that this family is being built by God for reasons greater than we can ask or imagine. And in word and action, we will speak our peace together. Amen. We will not pass the offering plate as we have not been doing during these times, but I do remind you that your financial support of the church is important and empowers us to minister in Christ's name. So your gifts are welcome online, or you may place checks or cash in the boxes in the atrium way later today. Thank you.
beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Supper which we are about to celebrate, the supper that is in pre-packaged communion sets, which you might, if you don't have one with you now, might get at the entrance of the sanctuary on either side. This supper is a holy feast of love of which we are called to partake of in remembrance, in communion, and in hope. Let us share together our opening words in the communion found in your liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy and right it is, and our joyful duty to give thanks to you at all times and all places, O Lord, our Creator, almighty and everlasting God. You made the heavens with all their hosts, the earth with all its plenty. You have given us life and being and preserve us by your providence. Yet you have shown us the fullness of your love by sending among and with us the eternal word. Jesus Christ made flesh for us and our salvation. For the precious gift of this mighty Savior who has reconciled us to you, we praise and bless you, O God. With your whole church on earth and all the company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name. O righteous God, we remember in this supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. In the joy of his resurrection and in expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, and stir up your spirit within us that the bread which we break and the cups which we bless may be unto us the communion of the body and blood of our Lord. And grant that, having been joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of the faith and grow up in all ways into Christ our Lord. And as this grain these grains have been gathered from many fields into these wafers. And these grapes from many hills into these cups. Grant, O oh Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth with your entire creation into your kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Our Savior, on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had broken it, gave it to his friends, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I invite you to take the bread and eat. And after they had supped, our Lord took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Drink this, all of you. Let us pray. We praise you, O Lord, 
that you have nourished us at your table. Your table scattered through this building. Your table scattered throughout the many tables of this world with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Grateful for your gifts and mindful for the communion of your saints, including those who we name before you who have gone before us, Julia Phillips, Alice Marcellus, Ronnie Bartholik, Dwayne Anderson, Hal Clements, Chuck Nelson, Joslyn Matthews, Jean Bundy, William Dodder, and Edward Murray. We offer to you our prayers for all people. O God of compassion, we remember before you the poor, the afflicted, the sick and the dying, the unemployed and the underemployed, prisoners and all who are lonely. We ask for your care of victims of injustice, inhumanity, and warfare, including those civilians caught in harm's way. O lifter of our heads, bring your consolation on all who grieve the loss of those they love. Assure them that nothing shall separate us from your love in Christ Jesus. O you who are the ultimate destiny of the nations, you are our sovereign. We therefore pray for all the nations of the world, including our own country. Inspire the hearts and minds of our leaders that they, together with all people, including us, may first seek your kingdom and righteousness so that order, liberty, peace, and justice may prevail for your whole cosmos. We pray for all peoples, your guiding divine light, O lover of justice. Take away from us the mistrust and lack of understanding that divide us and give to us an inclination towards understanding ourselves as the one human family you have made us to be. Increase in us a recognition that we are all your children, including even our enemies, near and at a distance. Enable us to forgive one another as we have been forgiven. Look upon your church in our struggle upon this earth, O Savior. Have mercy on our weaknesses. Bring to an end our unhappy divisions and scatter our fears. Look also upon the ministry of your church throughout the world. Increase our courage, strengthen our faith, and inspire our witness to all people in our homes, in our neighborhoods, our cities, even to the ends of the earth. O author of grace and God of abundance, your Holy Spirit's blessing upon your children here we experience. Keep our hearts and thoughts in Jesus, your Son, our only Savior, who has taught us to be bold to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to rise if you're able and wearing your masks, sing the last two stanzas of the hymn, God is here on page 461.
Immediately following the service, we will be having our annual meeting as soon as we can get a screen and the projector set up. So those who are with us and staying for the meeting, simply stay uh, in your pew. And if you wish, since we're not going to be singing, if you wish to move a little closer to the, the middle, you'll be able to see by those who are tuned in on Zoom. And you can do that by going uh, to the church website and just going to the fellowship hour or the annual meeting and clicking that on. Um, there will be copies, additional copies of the annual meeting arriving very shortly, we trust. And so we encourage those who are here to pick up a copy if they wish and share one um, if you're near somebody. Uh, also, following the service, if you're not up for an annual meeting or the fellowship time or the picnic that follows the annual meeting, uh, just need a little bit of support. Kieran Gonda, our Stephen minister, is standing by to be of help uh, to those uh, who just need a little another layer of care. Oh, and communion, your communion elements. If you're leaving, make sure to put those in the trash that's right through these doors on the right-hand side, the gray bin, um, so that others don't have to pick up after us. Good. Thank you. I just want to repeat a couple of lines from that hymn. We are here to learn what it means in daily living to believe and to adore. And we ask God to help us work God's purpose out. That is our task as family. I leave you with these words used in the youth service a couple of weeks ago as their benediction. May today there be peace within you. May you trust that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith in yourselves and others. May you use the gifts you have received and pass on the love of God that has been given to you. And I will add this morning, may you invite others and welcome others into this family of faith in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.